Did you know Spiro is colorblind? Did you know Clefairy was almost the Pokemon mascot? Oh, you did? Good. Well, then I'm going to tell you some facts about Pokemon that you actually don't know. My name is Finn, and this is part four in my series of searching far and wide for the most obscure Pokemon knowledge I can find and bringing it to you. Make sure to leave a comment on how many of these you were actually aware of to help me make these videos better, and without any delay, let's get right into this. I'm going to kick this off like always with one of the most interesting facts on this list. In Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum, the nature of your Pokemon has a very interesting effect that I'm quite positive you have never noticed. As you're well aware, natures raise one stat and lower another on your Pokemon, or don't do anything at all. Well, if you happen to have a nature that is plus or minus your speed stat, it will affect the speed of your Pokeball throwout animation. It's a little hard to tell, but watch closely. The left is a Pokemon with a neutral nature, and the right is a plus speed nature Pokemon. As you can see, the Pokemon with the plus speed nature completes its animation much faster. Shout out to my friend TC Bronzong, who I saw this from on Twitter. By the way, I want to interact with more of my subscribers, so make sure to go follow me on Twitter. Additionally, all the way back in Generation 3, a very similar but hard to notice quirk was added that I bet you didn't catch either. You see if the Pokemon leading your party is a higher level than the wild Pokemon that spawn in that area, the encounter animation will actually be significantly faster. Here's another side-by-side -side comparison. If you have dove into the world of obscure Pokemon knowledge, you might know that in Generation 2, the way shiny Pokemon are determined is different than any other generation, in that they're determined by their actual stats and IVs, as opposed to hidden IDs like later on. Well, the original shiny formula actually had some interesting effects on some Pokemon. The Pokemon that were directly affected were any Pokemon with an 88 to 12 male to female gender ratio, such as the Gift Eevee in Goldenrod City and the three Johto starters. Due to the way shininess was determined, for whatever reason, the 12% female versions of these Pokemon could not be shiny whatsoever. No matter how many times you reset your game, you will never find a shiny female starter or Eevee in these games. Uh... The Safari Zone. The spot where you spend hours trying to catch low percent Pokemon until you give up or find a shiny one, and it flees and you smash your game cartridge. But, what if there's an easier way to go about this? Well, if you happen to be in Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald, then you're in luck. There's actually a very useful glitch with the Pokeblocks mechanic. By putting the exact right combination of Pokeblocks in the feeder and throwing the right colored blocks at your targeted Pokemon, it will make any Mon you want to catch completely unable to flee. I left a link in the description to a guide to this by my friend Shiny Collector. But this isn't the only quirk with Pokeblocks in the same Safari Zone. The way a Pokemon reacts when it is given a Pokeblock will actually display its nature. For instance, a hardy Pokemon will make three jumps, growing in height each time, while a careful Pokemon will make three small jumps, whereas a docile Pokemon will make no movement at all. In Pokemon Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum, if you happen to take a stroll onto Route 212 on May 1st, you'll be greeted by the only day in the entire game where it will not be raining on that route. Have you ever played Pokemon Puzzle League for the Nintendo 64 and Wii? No? Yeah, me neither. But in this game, there's an unused voice line buried in the files. It contains a recording of one of the developers confessing their love for somebody. This is one of the weirdest things I've ever seen go unused in a Pokemon game, but I gotta admit, it's kinda cute. Check this out. Amy chan I I love you, Liz. In Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, Gates to Infinity, the Swana that runs an inn and cafe makes a now extremely outdated reference to the song Call Me Maybe by Carly Rae Jepsen. One common theme in Pokemon is hiding very obvious nods or Easter eggs just barely out of the player's reach. And while researching this, I found one example that I had never seen before. 
You may have seen pattern bush on the Seve Islands in fire red and leaf green that on your first run through you might think is a standard grassy route, but from an aerial view resembles a circuit board. But if you think that's a reach, then when's the last time you floated above Snow Point City in Pokemon Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum? Because you might think twice about every location you go in when you notice this city is designed to resemble a snowflake. Did you know Pokemon and Naruto might have more in common than you think? The move Double Team is actually based on the same idea as Naruto's Shadow Clone Jutsu. In Japan, Double Team is called Kage Bunshin. If you're a goaded subwatcher, you've heard this term before. You probably remember in the very beginning of almost every single Pokemon game, where the professor throws out a Pokemon and introduces you to the world. Well, in Generation 5, <clears throat> the best generation, it is the only generation where the professor throws out a Pokemon, and it has a chance to be shiny. Not just Minchino in Black and White, but even the Chinchino in Black and White too, meaning this was intended or went unnoticed. In Pokemon Emerald on the Cycling Road, there is an NPC that tells you how fast you cross the bridge down to a hundredth of a second. And I'm sure I wasn't the only one who, when I heard this, instantly got speedrunner brain and wanted to see how fast I could beat the course. Well, good luck, because the world's fastest time is 9.15 seconds. And one day on my Twitch channel, Twitch TV slash Blueboyfin, by the way, I tried to tie or beat that record. After perfecting the optimized route, I was able to snag a 9.16, but I found out that getting down to 9.15 has to do with some kind of frame roll thing that I know nothing about. But it was really fun, so if you enjoy a good challenge, dust off that emerald copy and let me know if you can tie my 9.16. If you take a copy of Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon and push them together, you create a picture of Ultra Necrozma. There's an interesting glitch in Sword and Shield regarding Shedinja. If you have a mark or ribbons on your Nincada and then evolve the Pokemon, check Shedinja and it will have none of the ribbons or marks, but interestingly enough, it will keep its title when thrown out in battle as if it still had it. Shout out to Anubis who I found this from on Twitter. On April 27th, 2011, a Pokemon distribution event called the Secret Egg event started that lasted for one month. During this month, you could go to any of your local Toys R Us and receive a mystery egg. An egg that could hatch into any of three Pokemon, Pidove, Pansage, or Axew. This event was held to correspond with Ash's, Silence, or Iris' Pokemon but what if you could end up with a slightly different Pokemon? So there's a big trend when it comes to most event Pokemon in that they're usually shiny locked. And they are. You see, most event Pokemon can never sparkle or are advertised as shiny and are already predetermined. It's usually pretty cut and dry what kind of Pokemon you are receiving especially after they did away with event Pokemon that took you to whole new locations in game after generation four. Also, please bring that back, that was the coolest thing ever. But these Pokemon and a few others are a little bit different. You see, the way shinies are determined in all Pokemon games past gen two is that they have to line up the IDs and personality value of the Pokemon with your own trainer's ID, Almost as if there's a secret 1 out of 8,192 match for a Pokemon to be shiny. But these three Pokemon were designed to never be able to match your ID as soon as you receive them. So how could they possibly be shiny? Well, let's say we received an Axew egg from the event. And even though the Pokemon will never match your ID to be shiny, it doesn't mean that it won't match someone else's. Let's say you trade the egg to your friend, we'll call him Gary. Gary has a completely different trainer ID and secret ID than you do, so the lock that was once applied to the Pokemon no longer has any effect. But because we only have one of these eggs, it means that Gary has only one out of 8,192 odds to match perfectly with this egg and be shiny. And if it isn't, he has to reset to before the egg was hatched and give it to someone else. A completely backward shiny hunt, 
where the shiny Pokemon itself haunts the trainer. Yes, it's true you could theoretically just start a new game and play through until you can trade and hatch the egg, and if it isn't shiny, you start a new game and on and on and on. But I have a dream of a different approach. The largest scale multi-person shiny hunt. One save file, one hatch, one chance. If you're not the puzzle piece, you pass it on. Until we find the trainer that matches the egg perfectly and it's their rightful shiny Pokemon. You see, here are the Pokemon that I could find that have this effect on them. And here are all the ones that are obtainable today. Almost none. Many of which, including our three friends from earlier, have succumbed to the passage of time. But one shines brightly among the rest. Manaphy. You probably have heard of the Pokemon Ranger Manaphy Egg, an egg you could trade into Generation 4 after beating the entire game of Pokemon Ranger. One of the most difficult shiny hunts possible that requires you to do exactly as I explained of starting new save files and trading back and forth. But I'm not here to talk about that sadly because the Nintendo DS Wi-Fi service shut down, so a large scale shiny hunt like I described would be very difficult. But a few months ago, it was announced that as a pre-order bonus for Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl would include, you guessed it, the Manaphy Egg. And in a few days from the release of this video, we will know once and for all if the egg will behave in the same weird way as before. And if it does, I will personally begin this quest and track down the viewer or subscriber who is the rightful owner of a shiny Manaphy. So make sure to check out my Twitter and Twitch if you might want to be a part of it. We also have an incredible community and I really want to interact with more of you. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you genuinely enjoyed, please consider subscribing.